David, talking about higher education of today, uh, you have a very important point stating that we are moving from a very formal, old-fashioned, traditional setting into another one, uh, a social, uh, a much more individual way of learning. Mm. Could you delve into that? Yeah, I, I, I think that the people talk about the learning revolution which needs to take place. And in a sense, I, I feel that it already has, but it's not in the formal sphere. It's been the way in which that we, we share knowledge and learning socially. Um, and the technology has, has made possible what I think is always our natural desire. It's just that we've now opened it up beyond the classroom. And so I think anyone who's engaged in formal education now has to recognise that this exists and therefore has a responsibility to say, how can I harness the power of this um, f for good uh, and not see it as a threat? That's a good old story about teaching people on the basis of their future yeah. and not on the basis of our past. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. What are we to do? It's a, it's a real <laughs> challenge. I mean, I think... it. it for me, it's a little bit like the first time, you know, I was given a computer and I thought, what do I do with this thing? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, moving beyond that, I remember the first time I bought anything on eBay and I thought, well, I'll never see that money again. It will just disappear. But I think the only thing that we can do is to, is to recognise that it's there and we have to work with it. I think uh, going forward now, educators who are not technology literate, yeah. uh, that doesn't mean to say we've all got to be you know, geeks and understand coding, but, but we just have to feel comfortable with these tools because our students do. Yeah. And, and I, do, I really don't buy the Mark Prensky thing about digital natives and immigrants. No. I don't think it's an age thing. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're not exactly young, but I think we've, <laughs> we've, we've risen to that challenge. And, uh, and for me, it's exciting to see, you know, the fact that now we have opportunities in professional learning for academics where your closest collaborator might be on the other side of the world. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and we have, you know, I, I, I go to conferences now and I meet people that for the first time that I've been communicating with on Twitter. And that's really exciting. Um, but we can't pretend it's not there to stay now. No, on the contrary. Mm. Um, of course, you're right that all the young people today are computer literate. But to which extent are they able to use their smartphones, yeah, uh, yeah. their whatever, in a learning context? Do they need help, so to speak? <clears throat> yeah, I, I think they don't need help with the actual no, tools, with the technology. Sure. Yeah. I think they, they still need help with the, um, with the, the filter the, yeah. that, that, that needs to apply to this kind of stuff. I think they're getting better at it. I think we're all getting better at it. I remember when I used to work in a university and I, 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 um, we used to have these debates about whether you could trust Wikipedia, you know, but now it's a pretty much accepted authoritative yeah. uh, source. So, I th you know, when I sometimes I hear educators saying, oh, students will just, the first thing they do is to turn to Wikipedia. Well, it's the first thing I do. You know, it's a pretty reliable source. There are others, of course. And I think it's, it's, it's more than simply where we find that information. It's as much about how that can, can take us into fields that we yeah. perhaps didn't expect. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and that really comes through the, the, the learning designer, whoever that's going to be, whether that's a librarian, a, a lecturer, a teacher, whether it, they need to understand that kind of ecology which is out there, right. that no longer can they be the expert. And, and there are lots of people out there who, who want to help. The question here is, of course, why do we have to realise that things change and why do we have to appreciate this change? There's two ways of looking at this. You could, you could say it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity mm -hmm. which we, we'd be foolish to, to let slip. But I think we also have to say that if we don't, then uh, our relevance starts to become questionable because when I went to school, there were only two places. You could go to school or the library. They were the only two places you could really learn. Now you can go anywhere. Uh, and increasingly now when you have things like MIT putting all its courses online, any, any lecturer has to say, what is it that I can do that my students 
can't get elsewhere because that's, that's how we stay relevant. Once you start to think about opening up learning, then you think about the virtual world and the real world and you start to think, uh, okay, we're, 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 we're looking much more at a kind of ecosystem. So it, to use that analogy, it's almost that the role of the, the educator now is looking after that ecosystem, is making sure that people are, are handling it responsibly, that students know what they're doing, that they're doing things safely. It, it's a much more nuanced role, I think, that educators will have in the future. The teacher today has to sort of go into such a social learning environment and, and, and be part of it in order for him or her to learn. Absolutely. What to do. Yep. And I think that's, that's important because I wonder how many teachers are willing to, to take that step. Well, it's true, and, and, and there, I think there was a survey done recently that fewer than 5% of teachers actually use Twitter, for example, or, or social media. So I think in terms of our own professional learning, we, we, are, we are failing ourselves if we don't take advantage of this. The setting of this social learning is often referred to as learning commons. And I know that this is uh, a concept that really is of importance for you. Yeah, it is. And, and the phrase itself has been used quite widely in North American universities to signify a library. And I suppose in, in my mind, it's, it's something broader than that. But it is to recognise that, as in the, the, the commons movement in, in 17th century Britain, where land was given to people and they, they had to share that use and they recognised that they, they, they had a responsibility to put in only what they were then going to take out. We, we have an opportunity now, it seems to me, to think about how we design learning, how we assess learning, in a way which can open the participation to a much broader set of people. But with that comes a responsibility for us, um, not simply to say, for example, we've got business leaders in the community, what can they do for us? But to ask, what can we do for them? Uh, and if we do that, then we, we, we can, I think it, it goes beyond then the, the, the teacher or lecturer thinking that, they, that the, the learning has to revolve around them, that it, it democratises that learning, but it also enriches it too.